morning, sir. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Please sit down. Thank you, sir. Ms. Goyal, you are uh, you are from Punjab, is it? Uh, yes, sir. I was born in Punjab, but I've been brought up in Delhi. In Delhi. And you are uh, after your uh, graduation, your BE, you have worked as a software engineer. Yes, sir. So this was where in uh, with Microsoft. Yes, sir. But that's a top, uh, absolutely <laughs> top of the line uh, company. Why did you leave it? Uh, so I believe I would have realized my full potential in the civil service. Okay. And I aspire to be a foreign service officer. Very good. Very good. So you first did a, uh, you first worked with the, which what is software department intern where? Uh, so, so basically I worked uh, with Microsoft as an intern. Later on I got a pre-placement offer from them and I oh, joined in your Okay, data. okay. So you were in Microsoft uh, right through from 2016 to 18. Uh, two so, years. Uh, huh? So I did a two month intern with them. Oh. Uh, that was after my third year of college. I see. Post that they offered me a placement right. and I joined a year later. And you uh, you joined in Hyderabad, right? Yes. Sir. Now, did you take a decision uh, that you wanted to join the civil services after your R&D, uh, your uh, stint with Microsoft or prior to that? Uh, Sir, so when I was 15, I represented my school at the Model United Nations of Germany. Okay. And uh, I got a taste of diplomacy back then. Uh, after working at Microsoft, I realized that uh, probably I will do better if I am a foreign service officer and hence I made the decision. Now, is this your first attempt? Uh, so this is my third attempt, but my first interview. Third attempt, but first interview, right? Yes. Sir. Okay, good. Aap uh, it is said that we are not fully federal state. Uh, what sort of federalism do we have and do you think this is the option we had and we have chosen the right option? Uh, so I believe uh, K.C. Vyor, he was a constitutional expert and he considered India to be quasi-federal. Uh, I believe that that is uh, viewing Indian constitution and Indian federalism through an American lens. However, I believe that uh, our constitution, our federalism is a sui generis model based on our histories, our, uh, the partition that was happening when the constitution was being written. And despite having a unitary bias, I think this model works best for India. Let us come to uh, these agreements commitments that we undertake, how do we implement it under our constitution setup? Uh, so, I believe there is an article 51 that, uh, uh, that, uh, that determines and that asks us to, uh, uh, asks us to follow the international agreements and decisions. And I think for India, it is a constitutional uh, uh, prerogative to uh, follow international agreements. Suppose we want to enact uh, the federal uh, fund commitment or enactment or amendment of certain laws. How do we go about as seven schedule not coming to accept the way of uh, uh, or is there something there? Uh, so I uh, am sorry, sir, I am not aware of it. Uh, Sphere single judgment. Have you heard about it? Yes, sir. Okay, sir. So, uh, it's regarding the 60, uh, section 66A of the IT amendment, uh, IT Act 2000, and uh, it uh, respected the ju uh, the judgment respected uh, Shia Singles' right to freely uh, uh, to freely speak on the internet, and uh, it respected uh, freedom of speech and expression on the internet. But now, it is social media is growing now. How do we regulate social media today in this context? So, uh, despite democratizing information and media, social media poses its own threats. And uh, recently, the government also brought the social media rules, the IT rules, which uh, posed a responsibility on the social media intermediaries. And uh, I think uh, those rules will help us uh, regulate the social media 
owing to the concerns of anonymity and uh, privacy that social media poses. You heard about the Me Too movement? Yes, sir. It started with social media. I think it gained legitimacy. Am I correct if I say that it gained credibility? Uh, so the Me Too movement, which started in America, it I think it is through social media that people got to know about it, and uh, it respected the feminist movement, and uh, it was for women's rights. And I think social media, if it helps uh, the women who faced some kind of harassment, uh, if it helps them to come across uh, openly about whatever they felt, I think uh, it legitimized. The senior minister had filed a case for the case. Are you aware of that? And there is a case. Sir, I have, I am not... Uh, you are the minister of state question. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, I am aware of the allegations. That case ended in the And then there was lost practice. It is pending. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. You were a software engineer in Microsoft. Yes, sir. And uh, there is the word micro and there is the word soft. Yes, sir. So most of their work is uh, in software engineering or hardware also they have got it. Uh, sir, uh, micro as uh, taking cues from your question, uh, Microsoft was named for microservices software. Uh, when it was established by Bill Gates and Paul Allen. Uh, initially, they developed an operating system. No, are they in hardware also today? Yes, sir. So today, uh, for example, they make the Surface Pro, the Surface, Surface Pro Tab. or Surface also? Yes, sir. So, so they have... Okay. I got it. Yes. Right. Okay. Tell me that Indian as a group and India as a country has done very well in software. Where did we lack in hardware engineering and why? Uh, so I think uh, in hardware, uh, the basic uh, requirement is to have semiconductors to build the hardware. And I think uh, firstly, it's due to the lack of semiconductors. We don't have res enough resources to manufacture semiconductors. Okay. Let yes. me interrupt you. Very few countries have semiconductors, fabrication, foundries. They all import from you know which country. Yes, sir. And uh, so we could have also imported like we import 100 other things. Was that the only reason? So Every I'm country which is doing well today, Europe, uh, Asia or other, does not have a uh, facility for manufacturing of semiconductors, microchips. Yes, sir. But they are good in hardware. Uh, so I think our focus primarily was IT services initially and we also focused a lot on export, uh, exporting services in IT. So uh, I think uh, initially there wasn't an incentive but very recently uh, we have the PLI scheme for manufacturing electronics. So I think we are moving towards focusing on hardware now. If I put it this way that it was a mistake and a very grave mistake on the part of our leadership. IT, political, whatever you say, to neglect hardware manufacturing in India. Will, am I be, shall I be justified? Sir, I think initially... When yes or no first? Uh, no, sir. sir. No? no? It was not a mistake. Okay, then? Sir, I think uh, during those times, we focused on services and exporting. And uh, it's now that we see the vulnerability of supply chains, especially after the pandemic. And that is when we see that uh, we need to be self-sufficient. No. Think about it and read more. Okay. You are talking of uh, semiconductors, manufacturing and fabrication. What are the main decisions, major decisions the Government of India took in December 21 to encourage uh, semiconductors, manufacturing even at the nano scale? 25 nanometer and all. What were three or four major decisions? Are you aware? Uh, so I'm aware of the schemes. The first is the production linked incentive scheme. Uh, we are also supporting uh, electronic uh, clusters. Uh, uh, no, no. <laughs> that is a different line. Okay. Tell me um, uh, some 
there were some uh, <coughs> uh, proposals, there were some measures announced in this year's budget for uh, making digital India more effective, more successful. What were the highlights of that? Uh, sir, firstly that comes to my mind is having the RFID uh, passports. So, uh, one was the biometrics in the passports. That uh, was a utility, but how do we support in the budget? What support was announced? Oh, uh, sir, not aware. No? Uh, digital university, you heard of? Yes, sir. And the spreading of optical fiber right up to villages? Yes, sir. And what is the size of our number of uh, mobile phones in India? I'm not Does sure it come uh, to one person per head, one mobile per head? Sir, I think it comes uh, above one person per phone. It comes as a third small question. When Corona was spreading in Western Europe, uh, there was a sudden uh, rise in Italy, and uh, that uh, arose because of certain, um, you know, Nara. Uh, given by one of the mayors of an Italian city, slogan given by a, a mayor in Italian city. How? No. Okay. Thank you. Not aware of it. Sorry. Arsita, you uh, you can IFS as your first preference. Yes. Now you are winning. You won. Uh, you participated in Intra College Foundation Geek Opinion. What was that about? Tell uh, me something. Uh, Ma'am, so it was uh, a blog writing competition. The name of the competition was Geek Opinion. And uh, we were supposed to write a blog uh, uh, relating to technologies. Are you and a geek? Yes, ma'am, if you can call me. You are considered <laughs> a geek? Okay. Now, you read Indian contemporary non fiction. Which particular one struck you recently as a very good piece of non fiction? Uh, Ma'am, so very recently I read the book called India vs. UK by our uh, former permanent representative to the United Nations, uh, Mr. Syed Akbaruddin. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I like the book because uh, it, it showed and instilled a confidence in me and my country. The way uh, we, we decided to fight three elections simultaneously at the United Nations. And we ended up defeating the United Kingdom and getting our representative elected at the International Court of Justice, uh, Mr. Dalveer Bhandari. Uh, I think it swelled me with pride. Very good. All right. Just yesterday, a bill was introduced in Parliament which underlines India's foreign policy reach. What was that bill? Uh, Ma'am, about yesterday, I'm not. Okay, sure. it is a bill on the, uh, called the Antarctic Bill. Do you know something about India's Antarctic policy? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, are we a member of the Antarctic? Uh, ma'am, of the Antarctic, uh, I am not sure, but of the Arctic, we are observer uh, of the Arctic Council. And we have uh, a draft uh, Arctic policy as well. We also no, have in Antarctic, we did, we have signed a treaty 40 years ago. Yes, ma'am. And ma we have two stations there. Yes, ma'am. Which are they? Uh, ma'am, I think Bharti and Himadri. Bharti and Maitri. Himadri is in is Arctic, yes, yes ma'am. Okay, so what was this bill about? The bill is to regulate and monitor activities yes. to prevent any uh, illegal mining, you know, any kind of activity there which goes against the principles laid down for Antarctic. In future, anybody wanting to go on expedition also has to get the permit. Okay, that's the latest on the Antarctic. Okay. How many research stations are there? Uh, I'm of India or so two? No, India is only two. Uh, I'm not sure of the exact number. Okay, then 40 permanent okay. stations. Uh, the President of India is presently on a state visit to Ashkabat. Yes, ma'am. Tell me something about where is Ashkabat? What is this visit about? Uh, ma'am, I think it's the capital city of uh, uh, some uh, Central Asian Republic. I'm not. Which one? I'm not able to. Turkmenistan. Turkmenistan. Okay. What? Tell me something about the visit. Did you read about it? Uh, ma'am, I think uh, I have not uh, read 
about it but i think uh, india is uh, relooking at the central asian area and i think the state visit also pertains it's to the first uh, visit by a president of india to turkmenistan uh, after it became an independent nation okay. anything you know about uh, trade and connectivity issues relating to turkmenistan you've heard of the ashkabad agreement yes ma'am what is it agreement uh ma'am so uh, the ashkabad agreement uh, Uh, if i am uh, if i am recollecting it correctly it was the 17 plus 1 instc corridor also that we were thinking of joining and it was to connect uh, to connect all the central asian republics to the eastern europe side uh, i mean regarding the turkmenistan we also have a pipeline the tapi pipeline yeah. that is which are the country uh, turkmenistan afghanistan pakistan and india and iran also i think and now um Who won the Nobel Prize for Literature? I'm not aware of the. I'm not able to recollect it. Right. Abdul Razak Kurna. Yes, ma'am. Now we had a spate of uh, visits after the, during this uh, ongoing war. Some countries have visited, sent the top representatives to India yes. recently, just over this week. Yes, ma'am. Anything you. Followed about what our external affairs minister conveyed to them, or what our government conveyed. Uh, Ma'am, I think uh, under the ongoing war that we are seeing, uh, we saw uh, a series of visits. We first had uh, the Jap- uh, Japanese uh, uh, prime minister. Then we also had uh, peop- uh, we also had delegations from the European countries. Uh, very recently, we also have uh, the Russian foreign minister visiting us. so i think the underlying uh, reason why these visits have occurred is uh, is to build pressure on india uh, to change its stance against uh, change its stance uh, with respect to the war and uh, i think uh, for example the statements by the us delegation uh, mr dilip singh i think those were pertinent because uh, they stressed on how india has to balance its relations with the west and the us uh, on one hand and russia on the other and we doing that yes ma'am i think we are balancing uh, and i think uh, the western countries probably want us to take a tougher stance against russian and uh, russia and russian aggression and i think all these visits uh, are being seen in that light if you get into the foreign service and in your posting first posting you are given the charge of the economic wing what would your role be uh, ma'am i think uh, as we can the see economic diplomacy right yes ma'am uh, ma'am i think there'll be two priorities which come to my mind the first would be uh, india's role at the world trade organization i think time and again we have proved that we stand uh, for the global south and the rights of the global south so the first priority will be wto the second would be signing free trade agreements with countries which we see potential in for example we signed a series of ftas or we are in the process of signing uh, ftas with countries like Japan, uh, with countries like australia eu or um, <coughs> uae we signed very recently and you would also look at our trade no export import yes ma'am with the country in which you are posted also yes ma'am bilateral yes ma'am not only multilateral but bilateral would also be an important focus yes ma'am okay thank you thank you ma'am great mm, first of all uh, pleasure meeting you archita over here thank please you. tell me what is the meaning of the word archita so sir archita uh, means to be worshiped it comes from the sanskrit word archana which means to pray or prayer so archita is the object yes sir. archita is the object to be prayed yes sir. good now you behind you and in front of you there is this chanakya please tell me something about chanakya niti or what do you understand in five sentences so so uh, chanakya was the man behind the state craft of chandragupta maurya we also known him uh, know him as kautilya and uh, his treatise arthashastra 
is perhaps India's contribution to diplomacy and statecraft. Uh, the way he has written about war, uh, we see the earliest mentions of realism and uh, the uh, uh, realism in Indian thought, political thought. And I think he not only helped Chandragupta Maurya consolidate his empire and kingdom, but uh, he also gives a strong message for Indian foreign policy today. Yeah, but you know, much of this thing uh, since those days, don't you think, has undergone a tremendous change. It's, it's the, the whole game is of power. Who wields the power? Yes. He dictates the terms. You know, if in the Second World War, if the Axis powers would have won, theoretically I am saying, today we would have sung a different tune altogether. Who writes history? Yes, sir. You know, the winner writes it all. So, in this, what has he said with rela in relation to the power? Uh, sir, according to Kautilya, might is right. Uh, the strong do what they do and the weak must accept what they, what they have to accept. So, I think Chanakya also propounded the same theory of might is right. So, now bringing down to the present and what ma'am was asking you, that you as a diplomat, where would you position yourself in the global context where India is and you are, you are you know, representing India in a certain country and uh, in that context, how would you position yourself? Or the, what would be your thinking? Just assume. So I think uh, today India is exercising its strategic autonomy. And uh, as a diplomat, I will balance the interests, the national interests that India has, along with the civilizational principles uh, and ideas that India has been advocating. So I think my foreign policy, as I would see, would be a balance of both these two. Okay, <clears throat> think about this subject also, you know, further. Yes. And uh, next thing that I would like to ask you is what are the energy implications of the war in Ukraine? You know, what are the energy implications for the world? So, so uh, firstly, it has, uh, ma uh, it has manifested in, a way, uh, in different ways, the war. And uh, pertaining to energy, uh, firstly, Russia ha Russia is uh, a big a big uh, exporter of oil. So once the sanctions have come into play, uh, those supply uh, th that supply has completely choked. And that only is oil, uh, oil and natural gas. Uh, and so also, if we see uh, towards the renewable energy and batteries area, uh, a lot of uh, materials like the neon gas and palladium which are required to manufacture batteries they are also sourced from russia as well as ukraine so even that the manufacturing uh, capabilities are being affected due to the ongoing conflict so what will happen in europe etc you know this is they are on the other side of russia and if they do not get the natural gas and oil so what are they where are they going to source it from uh, the heating ring requirements and so on and so forth. Uh, so, so uh, the other OPEC countries, they are sourcing their oil and energy requirements from that. And we also have heard of reports where they are actually uh, bypassing the sanctions and buying oil from Russia. So, uh, that is how they are meeting their energy requirements. Okay, tell me which is a graver crisis in the last two years we heard we were all privy to the pandemic isn't it so and you know you couldn't go out and we shut ourselves out from practically all outdoor activities but which means that we gave it a great deal of importance our parents told us so we told our friends that no we can't meet and things that way everything became virtual now are we giving the same degree of importance to the catastrophe on the climate change front? Your so, perception? Uh, so, I think the pandemic, uh, what we suffered all through these two years, is like a wake-up call for the world uh, pertaining to climate change. And even if we haven't taken climate change seriously, the way at an individual level we should be taking, 
uh, I think the pandemic will uh, open everybody's eyes and start a new revolution towards climate change. So for example, uh, at, at, at a personal level, I don't switch on my ACs at home and I try to use the fan as much as possible, uh, being mindful of the carbon emissions that ACs generate. So I think at, since, pan, since the pandemic has instilled first a scientific temper and be a, a sense of responsibility towards the world, I think climate change will also be handled. Uh, I'm optimistic of being... You have to be, not only practice it at a personal level, but also be a sort of uh, an advocate of this in all communities that you face. But uh, some of these issues I would like you to think about more seriously so that you can have more focused responses. Good. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Goel, you, your optional subject was political science and international relations. Yes, sir. Now, in political science, there is a theory of separation of powers. Yes, What sir. is that theory? Uh, sir, so the separation of power theory was propounded by Montesquieu. And uh, he believed that uh, once the, uh, the powers with respect to execution and legislation are divided, uh, it, it, it is better for governance. So that is what he felt. He so meant. is our Indian constitution <coughs> following the precepts of separation of powers? Uh, so the Indian constitution is based on a system of checks and balances. It does not advocate a strict separation of powers. For example, we see the accountability uh, of the parliament, of the executive to the parliament. We also see a role of the executive in appointing judges. So I think ours is a system of checks and balances and not strict separation. Now the US constitution, that also follows a, a separation of powers, but they also have checks and balances, don't they? Uh, so they have, but I think in the US, uh, in the case of the United States, we see a strict separation. For example, the executive is not fully responsible to the parliament. But in Indian scenario, considering our colonial past and our society, uh, I think the checks and balances uh, model works better. Okay, right. Now, you have mentioned uh, as one of your extracurricular activities, what is this, vin vinyas yoga? Yes, sir. What is it? How is it pronounced? Uh, sir, vinyasa. Vinyas. Yes. Now, uh, how many different types of yoga are there? Uh, so, so uh, considering the yoga, the renaissance that we see in yoga, there are different schools of yoga. For example, vinyas that I practice. You also have uh, hatha yoga, uh, ayengar yoga, bikram yoga, and uh, more or less they believe in the same principles. But the way we perform yoga, the asanas, they differ. So, uh, the one which you have practiced, Vinyas Yoga, what is the, uh, how can you say that this is the, what is the difference between this and the others? Is there any difference? Yes, sir. Uh, so, so the asanas remain the same, but in Vinyasa, uh, we weave the asanas into a single posture okay. and it's all about gracefully exiting one posture into an another posture. And every time the sequence is over, we perform a Vinyasa, which means a high plank to Bhujangasana. To mountain pose and then we move on so to the So did you attend, did you attend some uh, place for this kind of yoga? Uh, so, so I was uh, acquainted with this yoga form while I was working at uh, Hyderabad. Okay. And I see. Uh, that is how I learned. Okay, right. Now our relations with China. Now there are several irritants which continue in our relationship. Border uh, dispute is one of them. Yes. What are the other areas in which we have uh, Irritants with China. Uh, so, so interestingly, interestingly, I read a book uh, since my hobby is reading, mm. and the book is called India versus China by Kanti Vajpayee, and he says that uh, we suffer from a four P problem in the relations. P, the first P being the perimeter, which which is the border dispute, but along with that, the irritants are also the perception that we hold of each other. For example, China holds a perception which is. Uh, not, uh, which is not a favorable perception of India. And also uh, we have the power asymmetry, for example, the trade deficit that we have with China. 
uh, during the border dispute we also heard reports of the power sector in maharashtra being affected by chinese cyber attacks cyber attacks yeah so that is also another issue and i think the the fourth p being the partnership uh, as we see that india has developed a proximity with the us I think our relations with China have also suffered because of the same. You see, uh, you have you have quoted from uh, uh, from Bukanti Bajpayee. That's all right. It's, it's very nicely written, no doubt about it. But it's is it just a matter of perception, or is there anything substantial on the ground? After all, you are aspiring for the foreign service. Yes, sir. So you should be very very clear in your thought. Is it a matter of perception with China, or do we have serious problems with China? Uh, Sir, so when he talks about perception, forget Kanti Bajpayee. Okay. I am asking you, as a aspirant for the Indian Foreign Service, do we have, in your view, serious issues with China or not? Oh, sir, I think we have, and uh, I think we see uh, that China suffers from a middle kingdom syndrome, where it feels that there can only be one sword in Asia, which is China. No, no, uh, Ms. Goel, you are going into a lot of uh, you know these uh, terms. I am asking you on the ground. Okay, sir. What are the major irritants which we have with China? Do we have any or no? Uh, yes, sir. So first is the border. Yeah. The border second is, is the trade deficit. The third is the cyber uh, okay. security. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the fourth is. Uh, so what about uh, China blocking our attempts at the NSG? Yes, sir. Isn't that a uh, cause of a irritant for us? Yes, sir. CPEC? Yes, sir. Why is India? Uh, how is India concerned with the CPEC? Uh, so it doesn't respect our territorial integrity. Exactly. It uh, it passes through what we call as the POK. That's right, POK, and a string of pearls. Yes, sir. An attempt by China to uh, to build a series of ports, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So, okay. Now let me come to something else. Uh, Article thirty-five A of the Constitution was withdrawn by the government in two thousand and nineteen, right? Yes. Along with uh, so, what was Article thirty-five A all about? Uh, so, so the Article thirty-five A uh, it pertained to the property rights being in Kashmir limited to people in Kashmir, and it. Restricted Indians, uh, the uh, Indians from other areas to buy property uh, and have rights there That's in all. Kashmir. Uh, so not only property but also uh, rights, uh, other rights. No, 35A was basically it empowered the state legislature to declare a person as a resident, permanent resident of the state. Yes, sir. And why was this an irritant for the government of India? What was the issue? Why did we have to remove it? Article 370 is a separate issue. Why did we have to abolish 35A? There was a major issue, isn't there? Yes, sir. Uh, so, so I think it was uh, it was an important step in the integration of Kashmir no, into see, India. See what it, no, just to give you a background. You see, after the partition, a large number of migrants from Pakistan came and settled in the Jammu region. Yes, sir. About one lakh plus, right? And they were not given the status as per Article 35A, and therefore, for years, they could not vote in the state assembly elections, and they were not entitled to various uh, benefits which the state subjects were given. That is the crux of the issue, and that one lakh had grown to one lakh fifty thousand over the years. Yes. So it is only now, after withdrawal of Article 35A, that the government has started providing the Domicile status to these people, Hindu migrants. Right. Sir. So that is the crux of the issue. Why this had to be removed. Now, uh, Jammu and Kashmir. If you read the newspapers, almost every day there is an incident of violence, militant attacks, terrorist attacks. Why do you think this is happening? Uh, sir, I think uh, it is primarily due to the involvement of Pakistan. And uh, time and again, cross-border terrorism has been an issue. Okay, good. So now, which are the main groups uh, which Pakistan is spon sponsoring from across the border? Uh, so one is the Hezbollah Mujahideen. Okay. Uh, even the LET. Uh, very yes. recently, the uh, the yeah. Resistance Front was also formed, Correct. which was responsible for the killings of Kashmiri Absolutely. Pandits. And one more, Jashim Mohammed. Yes, sir. Yeah. Masood Azhar. Yes, sir. Now, which was an again again an irritant. 
with China, wasn't it? It was yes, only, sir. I think, two years back that they finally stopped opposing it. Yes, sir, after uh, blocking it. Four after times. blocking it, right? Okay. Now tell me, you've heard of the Abraham Accords? Yes, sir. What were those? Uh, sir, so the Abraham Accords were signed in 2020 uh, with Israel and uh, UAE, hmm. uh, establishing relations uh, relations with Israel, and it also fo it also f uh, works as a new uh, Arab Israel bonhomie. So that which were see. the countries uh, which recognized Israel? Diplomatic relations established uh, sir, according the to the accord. Yeah. So the first was UAE right. and the second was uh, Bahrain. Uh, Bahrain. Yes, sir. And then? So I think Jordan also. Suran, uh, Sudan and Morocco. These are the countries, right? Okay, thank you. So now we end your mock interview. I will give you feedback. How have you done? Sir, not so good. No, no. Why do you say that? You are very good. You see, for the interview, don't you will not be able to answer every question. So the best thing to do is that if you are not very sure, because you know the, your your time for the in the before the UPSC is limited. Right. If you are asked a question and you are not very sure about it, the best thing to do is say, I do not have full knowledge of this. So okay. then the member will turn to something else. So that is the first thing. Don't uh, uh, you see? I asked you on irritants uh, with China, and you kept on quoting Kanti Bajpayee. Thank you. I am not interested in Kanti Bajpayee's views. I am interested in you as a candidate for the foreign service, right? So be uh, you may quote very briefly, but when you are asked a question, please make sure that you are brief and concise. Give some thought to the question which is asked, and then. Be very concise in your answer, right? Now, uh, in the interview, uh, one, your general knowledge and what is happening daily is very important. So, reading newspapers, you don't have very much time. Yes. Read a newspaper very, very carefully. My colleague asked you a question on the important visits, foreign visits to, the, to India. You forgot the British Foreign Secretary. You yes. forgot the Deputy NSA of, uh, of the US, right? So, if you are reading newspapers very, very carefully because you know a lot of things are happening. Right. Domestically, a lot of things are happening. Things are happening in the Northeast, in Jammu and Kashmir, in the hinterland of the country. Internationally, events are happening. So, you must read a newspaper very, very carefully for the next seven days at least. And also on the day of your interview, don't forget to read a newspaper. The other area from which you can expect questions is your DAF. Now, your DAF, uh, you had your optional subject of political science and international relations. So, both this is an area in which you should revise whatever you had done for your paper. And international relations, since you are an aspirant for the foreign service, you know, you should know what is happening all around you. Then uh, you belong to Delhi, then you know, they can ask you something on Delhi, you know, what is the state, what is the, uh, what are the issues, negative issues of Delhi, what are the plus points, you know. So be prepared to answer on that. Then you have, uh, you have mentioned, uh, uh, you, you're fond of non-fiction reading. So you know, they can ask you, which is the latest book you have read, how did you find it? So be prepared to answer that question. Of course, I asked you something on uh, the yoga. You are fond of listening to FM radio. So, you know, the, you can be asked this question on the leading question on that also. Uh, do you, are you fond of English music, Hindi music, what kind of music? You know, those kind of things you can be. And of course, your stint with Microsoft. You were asked certain questions by my colleague. But, you know, the fact that this was a job which was paying you 1,75,000 and you have decided to opt for the civil services. That is a question which would be a very legitimate question. So, you, you answer that, but uh, pre be prepared for that, okay? Otherwise, you are doing very well. You are very poised. You are able to answer effectively. Those are your plus points. But the more knowledge you have under uh, with you, the better you will do in the interview, right? Now, I will ask my colleagues if they have anything to add. I will say that uh, <coughs> when Honorable Chairman asked you about irritants, with China or any issue that you are speaking on, 
take up more important points first more substantive points first and not so substantive points later then uh, because you are a software engineer you are an engineer uh, do read about this um, these two things digital india in our budget they are making a massive investment to make digital india more uh, uh, <coughs> effective and more relevant to the national life and uh, this uh, semiconductors microchip fabrication they have allotted 10 billion dollars though looking at the foundries it is nothing it takes 15 to 20 billion so like that so these subjects uh, will be relevant for you and uh, software versus hardware is a whole issue thank you So, so this is the one that you are talking about, December twenty twenty one. Yes. Okay. Yes. So there are three major decisions taken: a very heavy subsidy out of this ten million dollar, then five percent on net sale for five years of certain uh, item. Thank you, sir. Yes. Akshita, you are very composed. You don't get flustered, and as you've already been told, uh, be brief to the point. You know, just. And always give your view. You know, you don't have to quote anybody. You okay. Give your yeah. views directly. And uh, do you wear saris? Yes, ma'am. I wear a sari on the day. on the interview. You will yes. wear. Yeah, it looks more formal. Yes. And and you're comfortable in a sari, right? Ma'am, I'll practice at home. <laughs> so just a suggestion. Yes. Ma and otherwise, uh, as I said, I think the newspaper reading should be really. Done every day in your interview and on the day of your interview. Very often they begin by asking what was today's highlights. You know, to throw you off the path. All the best. You you should do well. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah, I think um, there's nothing much that I wish to add, except that you know, be slightly more confident. You know, three percent, four percent more confidence would help. After all, you see, it's you have come for a. There are so many options in the employment market, and you've come for something, and you're good. That's all we would like yes. to tell you. Do it fully. Ah, uh, and um, so and full throttle, and then uh, some of the areas which we question those the representative. What they ask you over there might be entirely at variance from. the what was discussed in the mock interview but the my suggestion would be that each time somebody asks you a question which that which is slightly tricky or you have to put it in a couple of sentences take a breath and then answer and as one of my one of the colleagues pointed out over here uh, <clears throat> begin by prioritization you know you have to you have to say what is the most important thing first I, you have a scientific bent of mind, and you've done so well in life. So that's how, and the smaller things will follow as a result. Would focus to the point. That will also help. God bless. That's all the best. Sir. Thank you, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel, and press the bell icon to never miss an update.